So welcome to Women Matters. We are the 31st of August, two thirds of the year has passed and we had a very active meeting uh, period in this, in this year. The last three times Hanneli and Gertrud did a wonderful process. And now we took three weeks off, let's say holiday. Hello. <laughs> uh, Hello, and now we start again. And we will, I thought today maybe to think about the feminine Finish shadow. Me. But before we do that, uh, I would like you, everybody, to introduce yourself. We have a new face today. It's Lucy, and she is in Spain, she said. And um, yeah, I'm Heidi in Italy. Finally, after two months, it has rained. My garden is happy, and I'm inside the house, and I I don't really move a lot today, but it's fine too. A little bit of relax. And my animals are lying down the same when they look down and see the rain. Mm, no. <laughs> so that's me. I give over uh, first to Monia because I hope she makes it <laughs> opening. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? <sighs> Yeah, I just arrived from my vacation and uh, I still have to rearrange everything. The children were here while we were away and they rearranged the entire kitchen according to their liking. <laughs> I can't find anything. And, uh, but they also fixed the refrigerator and my hair blower broke and they renewed it. So it's, uh, yeah. I'm not really back yet, but I'm just sitting back and will be glad to hear from you. Do you want to give over to somebody? I give over to Lucy, the new face. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lucy. I am from Brazil, but I live here in Spain, Madrid. And I came to know about the group because of Victoria Martino that I just met. <laughs> and when all this stuff uh, finished with the coronavirus, you were invited to come to Madrid. <laughs> How old are you, Lucy? And what are you doing? What is your profession? You shouldn't ask a woman how old they are. <laughs> Everybody can ask me how old I am. <laughs> I'm 38. Oh. I, I am a psychologist, but right now I am working as a receptionist in an American school here in Madrid. Um, but I, I am a composer as, as well. I compose music and stuff like that. And I, I like doing many, many things once at a time. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> I am <laughs> seven. I will be 79 in one month. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I will be 80 next year and that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lucy, when you have finished, you give over to somebody who has not yet spoken, okay? Yeah, it could be Victoria because I know her. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, good afternoon. <laughs> good evening. Um, yes, I I want to start with Lucy because um, to to I was going to introduce her, but she got here before I did. <laughs> um, my excuse is the early hour. Um, I had a late night last night, but I met Lucy through the Caravan of Unity. So that's uh, the connection and it's just amazing to me how all these synchronicities because I got involved with the Caravan of Unity because of Ramona, um, Ramona Becker in Berlin. Um, well, it was because of you, Heidi, actually. <laughs> Originally, um, that's how I met Ramona. So um, I, I'm just celebrating because it seems that every time I turn around, there's a beautiful new friend. <laughs> Um, and so I'm so happy to, to meet Lucy. She was on the, on the Caravan of Unity call. There's a, there's a parallel Caravan of Unity movement um, going on in Brazil. That start, does it start tomorrow, Lucy? Yeah, and, um, 
and the and tomorrow also the one in that's based in Europe starts. Um, so when I heard on the on the last Caravan of Unity call that when Lucy introduced herself and said she was a um, a composer, I was interested, of course, being a musician. So I just reached out to her in the chat of, of the call and. Um, we exchanged contact information and we just, um, we've been, she's been sending me some of her songs and they're really beautiful. So I hope that she will share them with you too, that it's, um, all of her music comes to her, well, she can tell you, but it's, I, I'm just in great um, awe because I'm a performer, not a composer. And this, the music and the lyrics, she writes songs, they just come to her unbidden and she's just like a channel and she just writes them down and she doesn't have to change anything. And she's not a musician. She said she hasn't had musical background. Um, so I'm just amazed. And um, anyway, it's so I was really excited and I just thought she would add so much to this group because she's a she's a, um, a true mystic. <laughs> um, I guess, well, I guess I've said enough. So I'll, <laughs> I'll pass on to, um, to Hanali. Maybe you still say where you're calling in from, so people. Oh, have oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, so I'm calling in from um, La Mesa, California, where it's a foggy morning, sort of a relief after all our heat. Kind <laughs> of San Diego area. Thank you, Victoria. I'm Hanali from Johannesburg. And here we have very interesting weather. The one day you can swim, it's 27 degrees, and the next day, we have snow on Table Mountain, which is something that doesn't happen often. So we are gliding with the, with the seasons and the weather. And I'm really glad to be here again today. It's wonderful. Thank you. You can go over to... The I pass over to Christine. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Christine, and I'm calling in from Carlsbad, California, which, like Victoria, is in the San Diego area. And um, I'm a psychologist, Lucy, so that's interesting. You have connections with a few people in the group already. Um, and I've come to Integral, you know, for um, many years, which led me to Heidi, which led me to this group. And I do have a particular interest in uh, feminine issues. Um, in the States, we are celebrating the 100th anniversary of the uh, 19th Amendment to the Constitution. And the 19th Amendment gives the women uh, the right to vote. And um, took, well, it took a long time to get the right to vote. <laughs> and still, you know, what it has raised for, uh, discussion here is um, how black women were left out. They were not included uh, in the right to vote. That came much later for them. And how far we still have to go, that the right to vote was huge, but there's so many more issues of how women are not fully represented. And uh, a lot of it comes down to politics, really getting women out in leadership positions, having women lead is, is really what's going to change things. So. I am interested in feminine topics, and I think today will be a great topic. Thank you. And uh, Gertrude. Yeah, thank you. I'm Gertrud from Germany, in the middle, north of Frankfurt. And uh, I'm a coach, trainer, and consultant in the field of appreciation. And my Last week, I'm, I'm just coming back from a triangle trip <laughs> from the middle of Germany to the southwest, to the, the, the Black Forest, and had um, completion of um, appreciation training for, for counselors. And then all the way to Austria to celebrate my or our grandson's third, third birthday. And that was really, really great. Big, we have a bigger family celebration, but outside, so to take care of, <laughs> of health issues. And um, yeah, and then the triangle back home. And, and now I'm 
I'm here ready and happy to, to meet you again after three weeks. Wonderful. Here she is, Martini. <laughs> I hope she can hear us. We can hear her. It's so. Can you say something? It's always a, a problem. Last time it was also a problem on, on, on Friday with her technolo technology. Can you hear us, Martini? Connecting to audio. We will see. We just go on on the on the topic. As I said, I was inspired for this uh, topic because I uh, signed up for a um, summit, which was called the Shadow Feminine Shadow, and there were a lot of speakers. I haven't followed all of them, but the the few ones I have followed, I felt it was quite a a, a good level, and. Instead of listening to other people, I thought we could brainstorm a little bit uh, ourselves. What do we think is the feminine? We have discussed that already several times. What do we think is the shadow? What do we understand in the shadow? And what exactly is, in our ideas, the feminine shadow? I'm not sure that we can give a, a comprehensive uh, description of, of what it is and what it is not. But we can try to get it together by exploration, what you people think about it. And when um, Martini is ready, then we allow her to give her uh, intro. Uh, I just have a question to, about your third question. Mm -hmm. feminine shadow. You mean the global, like the feminine yep. shadow? Or whatever, whatever comes up, you know, just explore it. It is the whole range of what we can put under the uh, expression feminine shadow, what we can understand. Okay. Heidi, I'm ready. Okay, so now do your check in. That's fine. I have my handy as well, but mm -hmm. I prefer because, yeah, but I only see myself. It, it's, it's a okay. pity. Um, I'm from um, Austria, Vienna, Kritzendorf, um, living in the silence. Um, I uh, enjoy it very much that I can participate to this group and years. Um, um, what, what else can I say? I am very interested in the topic, in the thema, and um, well, uh, you wanted to start, Heidi. Mm -hmm. I uh, appreciate it very much. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So, who wants to start and give us their first impression of, of, of what you think that the feminine shadow might be or might cover? I mean, one of the things which are, um, are part of the feminine shadow. I don't expect you to do the whole. <laughs> uh, why don't you give us what you heard at the lectures? What uh, I heard, the... yeah, what I heard uh, apart from what we had already um, talked about in previous sessions, what I found interesting, the feminine shadow in men, that's uh, where I thought, oh, I have never thought about that. And uh, the, I think it was a woman or was, was it? A, no, it was a man, I think, saying that. He says that men are not allowed to develop their feminine side in society. And so he saw that as a, the feminine shadow in, 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 a, in a man. That was surprising for me. That's why I have uh, remembered it. But um, the other things, you know, as we have talked before, that we are often too shy and don't go out when we have to say something, but try to uh, not speak up when we are not, that the, let's say, the need for harmony and things like these things. No? So I would like to, to ask you spontaneously, what would you think is part of the feminine shadow? Well, I'll start by just uh, saying to me, shadow is a psychological concept from Jung, 
where we really have cut off from our consciousness a part of ourselves. And so, you know, in a larger sense, society can cut off a part of itself um, and be more of a cultural shadow. But it, it's hard to talk about shadow because almost by definition, it is hidden. It, it is not within our um, awareness. So um, I think, you know, to me, feminine shadow is when we cut off parts of ourselves to be pleasing to other people, because I think women ha are under a lot of pressure to uh, be pleasing. Um, so we are not authentic. And I think whenever we're not authentic, then, you know, we go into our shadow side uh, because we don't want to speak up. We don't want to be controversial. We don't want to cause conflict. Um, I myself am a people pleaser and avoid conflict to, to a fault. <laughs> and so um, for me, that's a, a big part of my shadow side. And um, I think culturally, the shadow that women have is probably maybe not being as inclusive enough where we don't recognize in other women, you know, we, we can shun other women, whether it be on the basis of religion or race or culture, but we shun other women and their experience uh, because maybe they're not exactly like us. They're too professional, they're, they're too domestic, they're too sexy, they're not sexy enough, whatever that may be. But um, I think culturally women have a hard time uh, being inclusive and recognizing all those aspects uh, within ourselves. You have given the definition shadow is that what we don't see, but we are a little bit older now, so we have seen shadow elements coming into into light in our own life and maybe in the life of other women we have witnessed that so a little bit I think we can say about it and, and you did. So I wonder what anybody else wants to say about that. Martini? Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed very much Clarissa Pinkola St. The Wolf's Frau, um, the the wolf uh, women. Um, when I re read this book, I think it is twenty or thirty years ago. Uh, I painted all these uh, elements of, of um, what was new for me and what, uh, for what I was very afraid in myself. And I, I, uh, I love to hear from you um, that you say to please the people. I do not want to please the people. Uh, for what I was very, and I, I, uh, I love to hear to please the people, I do very, very much because of my husband. He had an um, important um, parties and I didn't want to do that. So I, I had uh, to go to what I was afraid of very much, the inside of myself. And I'm also older, so Heidi, when I uh, was younger, so as you, I, I don't know your name anymore. It was Christina. Christina? Um, uh, okay, I, I think I've said already um, what I wanted to express. So it is beautiful to, to go to the shadows of yourself because you are very strong in those shadows, yeah? Itself. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy that uh, I'm older and, and uh, that I had these experiences. It's enough. 
Martini, unfortunately, sometimes you broke up, but I think we have more or less understood what you said, Monia. The original title is Women Who Run With The Wolves. And I read it in English and in German, and it was much better to read in English, amazingly. I don't know what the reason was, but uh, by the way, I didn't introduce myself. I also live in Vienna, and I spent 10 years in, the, in New York City a long time ago. Um, what came to my mind was <laughs> um, Inanna, the Sumeric goddess. Pereira wrote a book about how she descends to her shadow sister in the underworld and she has to deposit all her uh, wealth and all her knowledge and all her uh, influence until she stands naked before her shadow sister and then she dies. So the shadow is very, very powerful. And the way we approach the shadow depends individually on each of us. Some of us are very brave and take uh, substances to, to get deeper. Others do therapy uh, and others just look very closely what happens. Like uh, Ken Wilber's uh, shadow work, once something irritates you, it's a shadow. This is one of my basic, uh, <laughs> my basic tenets. And in times of Corona, there are so many things to irritate. So I couldn't stop doing shadow work all the time. I mean, people being negligible, it's their own uh, way. They could decide what to do and they decided against everybody else and just for their own pleasure. Um, community. So we have now very interesting times to study shadows. It's not a particular a female shadow um, to me. Uh, to me, the female shadow is very much our own, the image we have of ourselves, that we have to let go of it completely and to be authentic. And that's a very uh, challenging topic. I guess the psychiatrists among you will know more than I do. I'm a translator, but I was always very interested in psychology and spirituality. And so, and I'm also very, very, very happy to be as old as I am. Because it's much harder when you are younger, much harder, much harder, believe me. So look forward to becoming 80. <laughs> okay, I, that's what I, what came to my mind. I hope uh, some of you know uh, the book by Pereira. Uh, and uh, I would, it's, I only know it in German, so, uh, but probably there's also an English version. And I found it very stimulating and yeah, I would also recommend it very much. Next, <clears throat> what came up for me is the distorted fem feminine um, and then the the unconscious feminine, like Christine, the hidden one that you shared about, for me, they are different, personally. In working with energy, to feel it in your body, the distorted one is the one who wants to please and get recognition and have a voice, which means that the hidden part is the powerful part of ourselves that wants to come out. And there is a very quick shift that happens when I also work with women quite a bit in Africa um, 10, 12 years ago. And it's in the presence, in feeling the power from within that, that hidden parts come out and the distorted ones start to, to move, to, dis, you know, to move out. But the, the, the other part of that distorted part can, and we see it a lot in Africa, is the queen bee syndrome especially in business where women try to act like men and then they won't, they're more competitive than men. 
this part of the distorted feminine. Um, they won't allow each other the stage or in a, in a corporate environment to climb the ladder, doesn't matter how hard you work. Um, that part is because of the suppression for so long. And then you find very interesting experiences when you speak to men, especially in Africa, up in middle Africa and those parts of when the, when the true feminine comes out, they love it. But it is the one that's trying to stand up to them that then cause conflict. So it's a very interesting dynamic. I don't think there's any one answer to it. But as you're always sharing, I was just feeling in my body what's happening in my body of how do I feel when you share it? And sensing into that deep power that comes from within, it's incredible. And we have a long way to go. So Monia, I wish I can be so energetic and wise like you at that age. <laughs> no, really. And I think it's part of us as we go into that crone type energy, things start to change. We don't have anything to prove anymore. So that distorted part slowly starts to disappear, but it's a journey. I'm complete. I think uh, what Heidi was talking about, the female shadow in men um, and the our shadow is complementary, <laughs> kind of. So it, it's like for us only female um, ways of being are allowed not to be angry, not to be whatever, <laughs> uh, forceful. And, at, and on the men's side, exact, exactly the, the opposite is not allowed. So it's, it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's like complementary, the shadows. And I put in Niobe Way, that's a woman who worked with boys and, and to, to find out how boys um, grow up and that they come with the same, with the same amount of emotional capacity to, into the world, but then they get di distorted because uh, they should not act like a girl and uh, they have best friends till they are 13 and then they have to be men. And so, so that it's society and education that makes them and distorts them. And uh, for me, it's pretty personal with the female shadow. I, I can resonate with what you said. And, and for me, it's, it's really like there is, it's peeling onions. To, to to get to the bottom of something. Like today I tried to, uh, I asked for a coaching because there is a seminar coming up and I, how to get on the road and uh, get that filled. And, and then I felt like here in my throat, something lumping there. And it went all the way back to old stuff. So there is really like peeling onions from from very old things that happened. And for me, the female is being overpowered somehow with abuse, with, yeah, just sheer physical power and um, political power and all, all this. So, so distorting it's, uh, <laughs> oneself to, to get along with that. Yeah. And, and what you said, Christine, was this, um, somebody called it the crap basket. If you put craps into a basket and one tries to get out, the others pull them back. So, 
so you don't have to be afraid that the crabs get out because the others tear them down again. So, so I thought that that's what you were referring to, that women can sabotage other women very, very well. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's kind of potpourri in my head when I'm thinking of that. And, and one more thing, um, I was also trying to to think about the, can we introduce that for me, the golden shadow. So this is where I'm admiring somebody for something that I don't see in myself. And and. Yeah, don't relate to that quality in, in myself. So I externalize the qualities I I admire without really looking here. I'm wondering if Lucy is are you still here? We don't see you. And Victoria, if you want to say something. Um, I was just checking in with Lucy via chat, um, but I haven't heard back. Um, she, she may not have told you um, that she, she just got the coronavirus. So she's, she's actually ill. So please <laughs> pray for her, send good thoughts. Um, She's, um, she said she needs to sleep all the time. And um, so I'm not sure if she turned off her video because she needs to rest and she's keeping the call on in case she, so think good thoughts. <laughs> um, but that's probably um, what happened. Anyway, I've reached out to her, I'll see what she says. Um, the, oh, did you want to ask me to say something about the shadow? <laughs> I feel you don't have to. Um, <laughs> um, well, since I'm on, um, well, I I guess as I get older, I I'm trying to redefine for myself the stereotypes I feel that I was raised with. That I guess everyone was raised with. Um, I look at my daughter who's 28 and um, I see how liberated she is. Her generation, they have no, no sense. I mean, part of, I think that the big gender revolution is, is precisely related to that, that um, it seems that that generation is kind of all embracing and curious about everything and sort of um, at first I felt very disoriented when my, my daughter would introduce me to friends that identified as they, them, and things like that. I, I didn't know what to do, and I was nervous that I would offend somebody. Um, but I think what it does maybe, we'll, I mean, we'll see in the passage of time, but I feel like it, it may, may actually clear the field, so to speak, for a kind of um, new beginning that people, instead of thinking about the old stereotypes that we were inculcated with about what, what is feminine, what is masculine, um, what's appropriate in our culture and what isn't, what behaviors are accepted and what are not. Um, it, I feel like maybe there's, there's a lot of hope for the future in that sense, as long as people don't get lost. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Richard Rohr. Um, I don't know how, how much of a global impact he has, but he's, a, he's a, um, an incredible sage and mystic and teacher. Um, he's, by background, he's a Franciscan um, monk and priest, but he's gone way beyond all definitions. And um, he's actually appeared in, oh, there's Lucy, hi. <laughs> Glad to see you back. Um, Sorry, I just received a visitor 
and it oh. just left. I'm so really sorry. <laughs> oh no, no, I'm I'm just glad that you're you're uh, okay. I thought maybe you had needed to go to sleep. Um, so welcome back. Um, so let's see what was I saying. Oh, Richard Rohr. Yes, he he um, has written many um, really fascinating um, books and and articles and things about. He, he's actually taken, rather than the idea of um, the traditional gender ideas of the shadow, he's taken Thomas Merton's idea um, of the false self and the true self, and then worked with those to see how, um, what it comes down to for all of us, regardless of gender, is, is the, um, whether we let what the, the, the false self or what he actually called, Merton called it the so false self, he calls it the separate self. Um, and that's uh, the, the outward manifestation that, that the ego creates and we ident that we identify with. So whatever that entails, including gender. And the true self is what we need to get more access to and hopefully shed ourselves of the, at least of the unhealthy attributes of the separate self in order to, um, and that, and the goal, the ultimate goal is this, is this integration and, and, um, and acknowledging the interconnection between all beings. So it's, it's through, because the true self is the one that's linked in with everybody else and with all, all, um, all creation really, um, including nature. So, so that's sort of the, I feel like I, I've, I've been trying to go more in that direction because I've, I'm looking at um, at my own experiences of the, the you know the feminine and masculine, and I feel like it's even if we try to break it up like Jung did in, ter in terms of you know the the shadow. I'm not qualified to talk about Jung by any means. I'm not a psychologist, but. Um, I feel like we're still in that, you know, Jung was in, in another century. So he was doing the best he could to define these things that he, that he was perceived um, in terms, in the language that people would understand of his time. I guess that's what I'm saying. And I feel, as I said, looking at my daughter um, and the direction of that new generation, I see that the language and the images that we, um, that, that we use are, are rapidly becoming obsolete. And so we need not only new languages, but sort of we need to open up the conversation to, to be more, um, more all inclusive. So I talked a lot more than I planned to, so I'm gonna mute myself now. <laughs> so Lucy, over to you, if you want to say something to the topic in some some connection to the topic. <laughs> you need to unmute yourself if you want to speak. And if not, it's fine too. Just let us know. Oh, Lucy, did you want to speak to the topic? Heidi was inviting. I don't know if we. I'm we, sorry, I didn't hear it. Oh, <laughs> didn't you didn't hear it. I thought you did. Yeah, I'm sorry. Heidi, Heidi was inviting you if you wanted to to say something about the topic of. Oh, okay. The uh, I lost the most of the topic, so I am a little bit lost right now. I don't know if you want to keep on talking and something occurred to me, I tell you later, but now I, I don't know what has been talked before. Well, Lucy, maybe uh, you just tell us what do you think might be in your personal shadow? Uh, 
uh, as uh, Christine said, that's, that's something that's cut off from our awareness. So uh, do you think other people can uh, reflect that? Because it's easier to others see it easier than you yourself see it is my experience. You mean the personal shadows that we have, uh, that other people are more uh, more consciousness about this than ourselves? Ah, okay. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's a little uh, weird how much we are unconsciousness about the things of ourselves, and we have some incoherence about our behavior and what we think. So many times we think that we are doing something in this in some way, and we are very sure about that. But other people say a totally different way about what is going on in our life. So that's why I think it's so important to change, exchange opinions and to be a little bit more conscious, conscious consciousness about ourselves. Yeah, and this leads me to the question, I have already heard some of that. How can we realize that we are acting out of our shadow or thinking or whatever, out of our shadow parts? Or when are we, do we know that we are um, living in the moment in our authentic self? I mean, I heard already some, um, I heard... Uh, uh, when you are irritated, for instance. Gertrude, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I think that irritation is, is one part. And, and I think another one is something that is reoccurring. So it's, it's like, um, my, yeah, I just make it up. But uh, in my first marriage, I'm, uh, the man is like this and and there's these problems, and then I think <laughs> I take a, <laughs> a brown one instead of a, a blonde one, and the same problems reoccur. So it, it's like, um, yeah, so patterns that, that come and come and come again until I solve them, and I, I think there's a shadow behind that. So, yeah. yeah and, or that things trigger me in a way. So whenever somebody says this, then I shoot to the moon or yeah, something like that. So mm -hmm. I came to my mind just now when somebody gives you a feedback on something you have done or some, some other thing and you think, okay, I'm stupid. And then the second one says the same thing. And the third one says the same thing. I think then they have picked uh, one of these things where you should look uh, to. So probably this is one of the unseen parts of yourself. And that would be an occasion to, to have a look <laughs> if that's true. Because when somebody, it can be their problem, no? when only one person, even two people is probability. But from three on, when it's 10 people saying the same thing, this is definitely a moment to think, oh, look at it. There is a, a joke, um, somebody in the, in the radio, there, there's coming, uh, uh, take care or attention, please. There is somebody um, riding the wrong way on the auto route. And this guy hears it and says, 100. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what you just said, Heidi. Might be <laughs> that you've tr tried to think then. But there is another point as well. For example, I am someone that uh, I am uh, motivated by heart, my, my own heart. I hear the voice of my heart for everything. 
but many many uh, occasions people say that you should not do this and so you should be more a uh, reason centering centered this is it's complicated as well uh, to know exactly should I, I, I follow my, my heart and do what I feel that I should do or other people say, telling you what you should do if you, they were you? Because many times we have to hurt them and to see if you are being, doing some mistakes. But in another case, the limit of this to know exactly what, when is the point to, to hear or not to hear the, the other people. Well, I don't know why, but Trump came, comes to my mind. Is he acting out of his shadow? Nobody, hardly anybody agrees with him, but he continues on his way. So, uh, Maybe the shadow gives you so much energy that you just enjoy it, being in your shadow. This is, just came up to my mind. I never thought about that before. But maybe the energy of the shadow is, yeah, you should really be careful, maybe. What do you think about anybody? <laughs> because I just, this just turned up in me and I never thought about it before. Monia, you just described my mother. God rest her soul. <laughs> um, but she... Oh, she, yeah, your mother. I, you know, she really burned herself into my memory because you and your sister probably are the most unusual people I've ever met. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, having your child... You said she had you read the whole Bible before you were 12 years old. Mm -hmm. That's... <laughs> That yeah. that though that wasn't her shadow speaking. <laughs> I'm glad she she challenged me with that. But no, what I wanted to say about what you just uh, said about Trump. Uh, not that I want to compare my mother to Trump, but um, but she used to actually admit she had a terrible, terrible temper, um, very violent and very um, for me very frightening. My first conscious memory is of hearing her voice shouting and getting a stomachache, and still when I hear any kind of argument, even if it's in a restaurant, people I don't even know, I, I start to get sick. Um, but my mother, interestingly enough, knew that was her shadow. And she would even say, once I asked her, I said, why is it that she, she entertained all the time, she gave parties. And once I asked her, I said, why is it that you have to get so angry before you have your party that the whole family falls apart and none of us can really function. You know, it destroys the whole atmosphere and we're all like limp rags when the guests arrive. Um, and this is when I was old enough to even talk to her. <laughs> I was so afraid before that. And she said, so she knew it was her shadow. She said, I have to get angry because that's the only way that I can be energized enough to accomplish all my goals. And she said, I use my anger. This is what gives me the adrenaline. And with adrenaline, I can move mountains. So she was honest about it. Um, so it's interesting to me that you caught that because um, I've never thought about it like that before as a, as a shadow manifestation. So maybe Trump is an adrenaline chunky? Yeah, you, you say, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Christine, what is your, you are closer to him and... <laughs> than I am in Europe. Um, well, he definitely has a, a big shadow. I don't think he's very aware of very much about himself. Um, I think he mostly uh, is trying to get admiration. I mean, he thinks he's the greatest and uh, I can't even, I can I can hardly even talk about the person because he's so uh, repug repugnant. But um, yeah, I, th I, I think he just has a huge shadow and he continues to act out of that and, and people call him on it. And it is, it's, it's literally amazing that he has called upon his behavior again and again, and it doesn't seem to make any uh, difference to him. Does yeah. it irritate you? 
Oh God, I can't. Yeah, the beyond irritation. Beyond it, it's it's misery. Beyond, uh, beyond, irritation. Beyond. Beyond. Irritation. Beyond. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's miserable. It's miserable to. It's miserable. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You, I was you... gonna say. That. Oh, I was going to say something, though, about a shadow, and um, I think any relationship can help us see our shadow side. You know, people bring out or either directly, you know, in direct conversation parts that we don't know about ourselves, or we see things reflected back to us that we don't otherwise recognize. Um, but marriage in particular <laughs> is a challenge. <laughs> and. Um, I find myself having to constantly weigh, you know, feedback that I get from my husband, who is also a psychologist. So that's a double whammy right there, right? You know, I have to deal with that. But, you know, he's very astute in helping me point out, in helping point out the, the my shortcomings or the, the ways in which I interact that, they're not just shortcomings, but the ways I interact that perhaps are not, particularly helpful to our relationship, you know, can undermine our relationship. So I, I am constantly trying to weigh that and the feedback about what can be my shadow, what I'm not recognizing that I'm doing. But also, you know, then I have to, over time, it's like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe this is his shadow. <laughs> Maybe this is, you know, his Enneagram 8 trying to, you know, decide for me uh, what what's going on. So I, th I find marriage extremely challenging that way in terms of shadow work, because I, you know, have a person, you know, on a constant basis, helping me see things about myself. And I have found that very helpful. And I do find it to be true. I mean, you know, I know it to be true at many levels. But other times there's just a part in my gut that says, wait a minute, I don't think I want to swallow this. I don't think I'm going to take this all in because I see this could be part of his shadow. So it's a, it's a constant process back and forth. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else has had that experience. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I, I'm just thinking, um, for me, it, it's when you, when you, talk like this it, it's really like clinging in my ears because when we are fighting arguing not even fighting it's about me and my shortcomings and how i can overcome them and i think that's also a female shadow that we take <laughs> voluntarily everything to to us and us to be to be blamed and us to have uh, to change and transform and whatever and and then it's not only the topic itself to say wait a minute but it it's also wait a minute uh, I mean 99 percent it's it's about my shortcomings <laughs> maybe there's a disbalance in that even if in the single situation I can understand what she says <laughs> oh yes I know that this is really well I have been lucky I've been married to a lawyer so not to a psychiatrist and he now is in a very difficult situation because with regard to corona all the laws are not really helpful so they are really in a mess now the, the the lawyers and yeah i don't gloat i just uh well he's here retired now for a long time but he really is upset about that that lawyers and he's an enneagram one so he is also perfect and that lawyers can make mistakes and that an Enneagram one can make mistakes. So, but we've been married for 55 years and after that time you sort of 
there is a sort of telepathic com uh, communication, uh, which is very annoying sometimes because we want, I want to think my own thoughts and he wants to think his thoughts, but we are thinking each other's thoughts. So just watch out <laughs> what happens after some time. Yeah. I was thinking about, sorry, um, just one sentence. Um, what Monia said, it's, it's about um, Trump kind of, I think the shadow, one of the shadows is to, to project it. What, what's here, he sees in others. So it, it's like, there is nothing in me. It's just, you if somebody is blaming him for something it's the other person no i'm not a racist you are racist or whatever that might be the sentence and our collective shadow is also going towards him and feeding that so when we are really like <laughs> oh my god how could he and 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 so i think we're kind of feeding in that into fueling the power of that shadow. That's sometimes I think that. Yeah, Gertrude, I um, I really appreciate what you say because I, I um, my experience has been to, to stay disengaged. In fact, I don't even um, allow myself to see a picture of Trump <laughs> because I know that, you know, I can do what I can personally in my own circles um, if I know people that seem to be, you know, swallowing all kinds of fables and lies or, or their shadows are being fed. Um, but beyond that, I, I, um, I try to focus on the good and the beautiful and the true so that I can keep my own integrity and my own energy. Cause I think it's like a, it's like a, this, a vortex. I have friends here who, um, who literally are ill. They've, they've become all wound up and destroyed internally because of their violent hatred of Trump, which then extends to anyone else that they encounter who is a follower of his. And I see it as such a, you know, it's a destructive pattern. And um, when you talked about how people can be feeding him, I said to someone the other day, I said, you know, if, if you don't have a direct um, sphere of influence where you can really, you know, we, do, we all do what we can, but somehow this man is there in the White House. Um, and I said, I said, you know, I, I, the little I know about him, because I really keep myself away from that whole arena, I said the little I know about him, he reminds me of a two-year-old. He's a child who's having an enormous tantrum every day or every hour, it seems. And um, I know from parenting that what you do when that happens is you, you just ignore and it goes away. <laughs> um, obviously, that's naive and you can't do that with a politician. but. Um, but I think the feeding thing was very insightful that you said, Gertrude. I was thinking about the impossibility to uh, want to convince people with rational arguments who are not able to understand rationality and have, don't have that in their in their lives, you can say what you want, but that's just not makes doesn't make sense for them. And I wanted to say before I, I saw an interview, which was revealing, uh, where he still said they are the best, you know, and he, America is the best and it was about coronavirus and the interviewer was asked, really? And so and it came at least for me, it seemed that he was reading the, 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 um, the papers and America is on the top of the infection rates. And he didn't read up to there or didn't understand what it means, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but great, we're on the top. We are, we are doing best, you know. 
oh gosh. And I thought, yeah, that happens when people who have no um, yeah, rational uh, insights and also no, how can I say, no patience, no, no diligence to really see the interviewer asked him, do you read your papers, which they give you, you know, and, and he obviously hasn't, no? But uh, then the next question is, how come that people uh, elect somebody like with these missing abilities to be on the lead? And the next question is, are we maybe mistaken that we think that humanity, at least the Western world, is so advanced? And so, uh, growing up, maybe a big part of our follow people are not grown up at all, and they uh, are on the same, let's say, level, so that they support things like this. Because uh, I think, Monia, you said nobody really listens. I think there are people who are listening, because otherwise that wouldn't be possible. Uh, what bothers me is the election system in the United States because it's not a majority system as we have in Austria if somebody has a majority. But you can have two million people more Democrats and still because of the system. And the system is, yeah, it has been there for uh, two centuries and they haven't changed it. Now, why have, didn't they change it? Because all the Southern states, uh, well, you know that better than I do, but uh, this is one of the problems of the United States that, that they have a voting system that excludes people. And this is how it's, uh, to my our all amazement, Trump made it. It's, uh, it's really fascinating and it's really something we should more than look closely at because uh, that's quite, as we say in German, a hammer. <laughs> this is a hammer. Yeah. And they won't do anything about the voting system. So they have this uh, gerrymandering has been there for 100, 200 years and they still use it. It's, it's amazing. Actually, it's amazing. Yeah. So you are talking about a shadow in the system. Yep. Um, I think that psychologically that people look for security and for something to grab on. And we always in our history, we have believed to the loudest people who have promised the best things and made it somehow, uh, especially when there is a bad situation. I mean, as you know, in Germany, no, when Hitler came on, that was a difficult situation. And so he promised, I don't know what, and at the beginning he did something and people thought, oh, good. And I think it's, it's the same thing everywhere. It's like we are not able as people of, of the countries to really see behind, we don't see the motivations and we, we want to create a hero. That's another shadow topic, no? That we need a, a hero which we want to follow because we don't want to be responsible ourselves. So it's better that somebody else is doing the shit work. And even if it's shitty, but I, I thought he's good and now I close my mind and don't look at it anymore and so on. And I do think it has very much to do with individual psychology. I don't know you, a uh, psychologist, what you think about that. And for me, it's less political. <laughs> I don't want to turn this into a thing about Trump, but, but um, one of the things people really like about him is they call him authentic. Because he says what's on his mind. He doesn't, you know, mince words and he doesn't, you know, try to be politically correct, obviously. He doesn't, he doesn't try to be correct about anything. So people admire his authenticity. And I think we would probably all agree it's, it's shadow. How, is it authentic? Um, it, it's a conundrum as to whether is he really authentic because he says exactly what it's on his mind or is he totally oblivious to uh, his own shadow? I don't know. I would say in terms of spiral dynamics, it's authentic 
uh, red uh, energy in the in the unhealthy um, expression, and that's authentic. It's authentic. So the whole uh, idea of authenticity, oh, oh, yeah, this thing uh, we have to to rethink a little bit about. But is it it really? Isn't it a, a a soft expression which doesn't really mean anything because it was always seen as something good, but Trump is an authentic three-year-old. So, <laughs> yeah, what else can you say about that? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So the feminine shadow went into the shadow of <laughs> of political leaders. But it, it, it's nice. I like these conversations because we bring together so many aspects and then it makes me think, you know, um, different things which I couldn't think about and somebody else is, is bringing in. Then I think, oh, maybe we, have, we are over the hour and I would invite you to just say what you want to say, do a little bit of a check out and then we decide if you want to continue with that or if you find another topic next time. Okay, who wants to start? I would love to, um, if we had continued today on this conversation, I would love to put it before the wisdom of this collected group of sages. Um, the question, maybe it could be a theme sometime of, um, if we have limited energy uh, and capacity, is it, do you feel it's more important to um, develop our, our, our sunny side <laughs> um, or to work on, do shadow work and try to diminish the shadow or do half and half or is there some proportion or does it depend on the circumstances of life that we find ourselves in? I would love to hear all of your um, wisdom on that topic. Yeah, because could, I'm not sure I don't I'm not sure I understand what you're saying, Victoria. Oh, sorry. Um, well, it's, I guess, to, to put make it very sort of straightforward. Um, should we should we devote all of our all of our energy to strengthening ourselves and and, and um, Growing the our good good attributes, our positive attributes, and um, and and then the 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 weaker ones, the the negative ones will fade away. Maybe Heidi, you you seem to look, sound, you look like you understood. Can you explain it for me? I'm yeah, not. Yeah, I'm no, getting I less articulate by the minute. I got it, and I thought that it's a good topic. It is should we uh, spend our limited time, and the older we get, the less we obviously seem to have, uh, to more develop the positive sides, so getting our own strengths and our own confidence and then be emanating it to other people? Or should we more uh, concentrate on digging into deeper and deeper and deeper into shadow? Or if it is either or, or if is there a percentage, should we do more of that and all more of that or something like like this. That was I, what I got from what you said, and I think it's an interesting topic. Up to which point is shadow work important, and up to which point is more important to, to nurture the, the positive energies. No? Uh, yeah, that, that's good, because nurturing only positive energies, we know that, no positive reinforcement, blah, 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 and leaving away uh, the shadow parts, then we have spiritual uh, bypassing and stuff like this. So that would be a nice, a nice topic for, for me. Thank you for, I don't know, we, uh, are you consenting? We could do that next time. Good, so thank you. And let's continue with the checkout. I do it, it's raining again and my garden is happy. <laughs> my animals are not, but. <laughs> Okay, and I really enjoyed and I am grateful that you come to talk with me and inspire me. I'm ecocentric uh, in, my <laughs> in my thought process and also in the feeling of being together. It's really nice. I love it. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you all. I uh, enjoyed this morning and uh, look forward to the next time. Hope you all stay well. Hope you get better, Lucy. Hope you uh, recover quickly from the coronavirus. Um, I guess the other thing I was going to ask if we had more time was the question of the shadow, um, more societal shadow that coronavirus has exposed that, you know, the inequities, um, the things that are broken that have turned up because of the coronavirus, whether it's education or injustices, it's, it's just been really fascinating to see how such a big struggle as this pandemic has really uncovered a lot of things. And, and maybe that goes to the question of how much time do we spend on the positive versus the negative? But the pandemic isn't really giving us too much of a choice. It's not allowing us to focus on the sunnier side because uh, there's so much danger. So maybe that's part of the answer to that question. Thank you. I, I write it down and we can do that. In, in the meantime, I, I don't know if I've told you, there is a wonderful method of breathing, the Wim Hof method, which is giving you uh, uh, the, the power to withstand um, bacteria and, and viruses. And it's even scientifically... What method is that? Wim Hof. I can send you the, the links also. He did also um, research with, you know, all the um, he had even injected uh, viruses and he was able to breathe that away within one day. So that is a good uh, help, even, you know, just to make you feel that you can do something and that you are not the, the, um, the, the victim of some bad faith. And I can also connect with you, Lucy. I sent you an email afterwards and give you the links because I think it's very, very powerful and heightens the feeling of empowerment against such a thing, which is, seems overwhelming totally. Now I have two checkouts. I would like to... Um... To, to go on with that, what uh, Victoria suggested, because I think that's why I put in the, our appreciation manifesto in the chat. It, it's like, um, it's not either the negative or the, uh, or the positive. It's more like being with what's so, and then choose. So it's not the negative, I mean, just just to look and not creating alternative facts. So, so I think that it's different. It's not that, for me, the answer is not either or. And, and I would like to ponder on that. Um, and I uh, put in the, the winner effect from uh, Ian Robertson, Robertson, who's, who is talking about the brain physiology that happens when somebody overpowers somebody else. And so he has a lot of stories about it and, and there's also a TED talk by him. And I think what happens in our brains <laughs> when, when our shadow takes over or somebody else takes over. And um, I wanted to say something more, but uh, it's gone. So <laughs> next time, maybe. Yeah, I don't recall. So thank you, ladies. It's really been a pleasure. And uh, nice meeting you, Lucy and Martini. And seeing you all again. So. I didn't say very much. A wave around the world. <laughs> Go ahead, Martini. We see you frozen. Uh, and, but you, you could hear us, could you? Maybe if I go back, then it is better. I uh, do appreciate to uh, what um, the last person was saying. Uh, that uh, it is not bad or uh, good. Um, I do think we have to integrate both uh, to become one. Uh, 
and so will as, as as the the man shadow as the woman shadow in myself to find out and and, and then uh, i can become a whole person that is what uh, one person was uh, saying the name of thomas merton and uh, he is very very, very um uh, uh, capable of uh, uh, helping to become the uh, and maybe this is an appreciation of an other person but if an other person is telling me a positive thing then it helps me and it, that means that it is within me it is not coming from outside it is already within me so i I do I I didn't really understand that uh, the admiring of other persons had to do with the um, uh, shadow. Uh, I I do appreciate a lot of people, and I think there are beautiful people on their way, and uh, um, I feel one with these people yeah and so so it is integrated the the shadow uh i i this is entweder order it is uh okay heidi um it, the time has gone and maybe next time i i talk a little bit more thank you yeah. very much and hopefully thank your you. technical problems will be resolved yes yeah, and what you are talking about this, it was the golden shadow, which Gertrude said, uh, that when you admire people, that means that this is already also in you, but you might not see yes. it. No? And yes. this is, we think shadow is always dark, but that's both, it can be dark, the dark sides in yes. you, but they can also be the light sides in you, which haven't come out yet, which you have... Uh, pushed away because who am I? I'm not like this, you know, so you push it away and that is then in the shadow side, but it's light. So both is possible. Thank you, Martini. Uh, yeah. Uh, I would very much appreciate if we could go deeper into the societal shadow exposed by Corona because uh, it's we are society, so it's our shadow as well. And it's maybe quite painful. Why is meat so cheap? Why are certain vegetables so cheap? Because the people who helped, yeah, etc. you know what I'm going on. And um, yeah, this might be a good next session to really go deeper into this shadow. Like, and uh, the women's group, integral group was a field, was established to empower women, it, each of us. And I guess this is what we do here by empowering each other uh, and not putting each other down or like, I like this uh, a, a crab basket. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that before, but yeah, just to help each other and empower each other by talking about topics we usually don't talk about. And we are the grabs go, go out of the basket and make it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, who has not spoken yet? We forgot. Thank you. Call. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Um, I couldn't help but think of Lorraine. Lorraine loves her because she was, the few times that I've met her, she just wouldn't allow others to pull her down. She was so strong in herself, in her true self. And for me that regardless of what's happening around and whoever is present, I think when we come to that state where we can really step into our own true power and presence it, but regardless of what's happening or who is around, we've gone a long way. And I agree it's not an either or, it's also for me a sense of wholeness and integrative process of what's happening in this moment. If I'm triggered now, it's not 
to make it a process necessarily of working on myself on the shadow but in that moment to to go deeper in why what is this bringing out in me why am i irritated and this morning it's so interesting synchronistic wise i was reminded of how a pull is created in coming into being is that irritation of an, a, a foreign substance going into the shell and um so there's a lot of creative tension there for the pull to come into being so it just shows us if we are willing to go to that yucky parts what can come out but not to get stuck on those to not to don't too much on it otherwise it will pull us down and then we have no no chance really to come become the pull so thank you ladies i love it uh, i really appreciate these sessions Talking about shadows, I was wondering about uh, the human nature, about if it, we are made more of shadows or of light. And this is would be something that I would like to discuss some someday because it's something that I I think it's and uh, and. Besides it, I w there is one question that I always ask myself, but where it come from, the, the shadows? What is the origin of the, the bad things, for example, in the world? But this is a more philosophical question. Thank you. I've noted that also as a topic, we have a lot of topics to, to discuss, you know. So, yeah. Uh, Victoria, have you already done a checkout? I feel like I talked so much today that I've checked in and out and in and out and <laughs> in and out over and over again. Um, but I do want to say um, thank you, especially to you, Heidi, because you, you were my... Um, my Virgil, the Virgil to my Dante bringing me here, and to all of you ladies for your wisdom and for your, um, your beautiful natures, the, the, the sense of wisdom and compassion. And it's really wonderful. And thank you for um, letting me invite Lucy. And thank you, Lucy, for coming. And I hope you feel better soon. You're very pale. You need to get strong and well again. <laughs> Okay, thank you everyone. I look forward to next time. Yeah, thank you. And Lucy, get well, we others stay well. And I will send you all the links and I will so we'll put them under the video and in the website and everything. And yeah, we see you in two weeks. Okay. Two weeks from from now. Bye bye. <laughs>